Today, we're going to start talking about limits and co-limits. Limits and co-limits are a kind of universal object in a category. And one of the things that we like doing in category theory is identifying things with universal properties. Universal properties are when things are somehow the best or the biggest or the smallest or the most canonical or free or something. So you look at objects of a certain kind, you find the best one out of all those ones, and the way you say best is you say it's got some kind of universal property, which usually means for any other object of that type, there's some kind of good relationship between them, as we'll see. The most basic kind of limits and co-limits are the ones we'll do first, and these are terminal and initial objects. So let's start with a category C. Uh, let C be any category. We'll start with terminal objects. A terminal object in C is some object T. So it's an object and now it has a universal property. And what's its universal property? Its universal property is, here's, here's your universal object, and we're going to say that given any other object in the category, there is a unique morphism to the terminal object. That's why it's called terminal. Everything kind of ends up there. Uh, so it's an object T such that for all uh, X in C, there exists a unique morphism from the other one to the terminal one. That part, the such that part, is the universal property. Uh, so this is the, let's see, maybe I'll put it in blue. This part is the universal property. The part saying, among all objects, this one is the one that has a unique morphism going to it from everything else. Incidentally, these are also sometimes called final objects. Um, so let's immediately have some examples. In the category of sets, any one element set is terminal. Any one element set is terminal. Because if you have a set with one element, then there can only be one morphism, one function from any other set to it. And there is precisely one function. Because you just send every element of this set to the unique element of this set. And that's the only thing your function could possibly do. Um, so, for example, the set containing 1 is terminal, but also the set containing 4 is terminal. And also, the set containing 3,649 is also terminal. It doesn't matter what your element in there is. As long as there's only one element, precisely one element, then it's terminal. Um, now, one thing you'll immediately notice from this is that there isn't only one terminal set. However, all these terminal sets are really very similar to one another. It doesn't matter what the one object is. Um, and what we're going to see later is that when you have limits and co-limits, there's a certain sense in which they're not precisely unique, but they're unique up to unique isomorphism. Now, uniqueness up to unique isomorphism is a very important notion in category theory, and that's, it's a sort of categorical uniqueness. We're not interested in things being literally unique, because that would be saying something about um, Equalities, and we're supposed to consider isomorphisms to be sort of like equalities. So we're supposed to consider two objects as being more or less the same if they're isomorphic. So that means that we're not looking for uniqueness on the nose, we're only looking for uniqueness up to isomorphism, but not up to any old isomorphism, up to canonical isomorphism. So here, there's a canonical isomorphism between any two of these sets. Um, and we'll prove in a second that terminal objects are unique up to unique isomorphism. So let's have another example. Uh, in the category of groups, the trivial group is terminal. Um, another 
other example is that in the category of topological spaces, any one point space is terminal. And it's sort, of, it's sort of a little bit pointless to think about how many different trivial groups exist and how many different one-point spaces are terminal, because we don't really care what the one point is when we have a one-point space. There's just one point, which is sort of just exactly the same as the one element set. It's just saying that, that all the different one-point spaces are so canonically isomorphic that we can't even be bothered to think of them as different. Um, and what other example could we have? Oh, we could think about a poset. So in any poset, uh, in any poset. So remember, we can think of a poset. Oh, we've got space down here. Can we see that? Let's see. Yes, I think we can. In any poset, um, regarded as well, we've got uh, we've got a morphism. A to B, which means A is less than or equal to B. So what will it mean to be terminal? Well, it means given any other object, all morphisms between objects are unique. So we can ignore the uniqueness part. Given any other object, there's a morphism to that one, which means that that one must be maximal, um, must be the maximum. In any poset, um, a ma the maximum element is terminal if there is a maximum element. So not uh, not a kind of local maximum. I've forgotten what these things are called. Perhaps I should move swiftly on. If there's one element that's greater than or equal to all the other elements, then that one is going to be terminal. But let's move swiftly on from that. Uh, let's prove that terminal objects are unique up to unique isomorphism. So here's the lemma, which is very important. Terminal objects in a given category C are unique up to unique isomorphism. So how do we say that literally? We say if T and T inverse are terminal, then there exists a unique uh, isomorphism T goes to T prime. And what we do here is we do um, what John Byers sometimes calls the gunslinging contest. So uh, we say this is it's about who's the fastest gunslinger. So you, you, if you have two people who both claim they're the fastest one, then you have a competition between them. So we're going to have a competition between these two terminal objects. And we say, well, this one is terminal, so there's certainly a unique morphism going from this one to that one. But this one is terminal, so there's a unique morphism going from this one to this one. So we've got something that might be an inverse for it, but this one is also terminal, which means that there's a unique morphism going from it to itself which must be the identity, which means that when we compose like that, then we must get the identity, which shows that that, that really is an isomorphism. And likewise, if we start there and compose in this direction, then um, we get something that has to be the same as the identity, because this one is terminal. So I'm not sure if I have long enough actually to write this up, but uh, let's try. T prime is terminal, so we get a unique map from T to T prime is a proof. T is terminal. So we get a unique map T prime to T. Let's call that F and G. Um, and finally, we can show that F G equals G F equals 1 since T and T prime. Ah, uh, to stop. <laughs>